Simple answer, no. Um, I mean, I think the the appetite for home computing took everybody by surprise. Um, I mean, there were many companies building home computers at the time, um, and, and, and many quite successful, including you know, our competition in Cambridge from Sinclair. Um, so, so there were sales going on, um, but nobody really anticipated the way those uh, those sales would grow in the 1980s, which was quite spectacular. Um, one illustration of this was when um, three of us, I think it's Chris Turner, Sophie Wilson and myself, we were lined up to give a seminar at the IET Savoy Place in London. And they had a lecture theatre which would seat, I think, about six or 700 people. And this, this seminar on the BBC Micro was advertised. And three times the number of people that could fit in this lecture theatre turned up. Uh, people had rented buses from Birmingham. Um, and and, and um, it was quite embarrassing, actually, because some of, the, some of those buses had to go home um, because uh, it was not safe to let that number of people in. Um, but I think at that point, we, we got a sense that, that uh, the interest in this area was going to be very strong. Um, and in fact, we took the lecture on tour. Uh, we went around the UK and Ireland um, with the lecture and, and, and got very sort of uh, big audiences wherever we went, reflecting the degree of interest. Nobody saw the, uh, the phenomenal success that the BBC Micro finally be became uh, because 12,000 a year uh, was a fantastic number for us as it was. We thought that you know, 12,000 would, uh, would be great. Uh, in in that first year, I think we finally delivered a hundred thousand. So we, we did actually over deliver spectacularly. Uh, but as you then said, it, it went, we went on to uh, sell over two million over uh, of BBC Micro uh, architecture uh, computers, uh, and the BBC Micro architecture, uh, which really was a rather nice architecture. Uh, that uh, Sophia and um, uh, Stephen came up with uh, became the, I think, the longest living architecture together with the Bax architecture from, uh, from DEC. It was in production, I think, for 18 years. I don't think I'd change anything. Um, the BBC Micro put much more stress on the work I did for perfection, bug freeness. Because, um, you know, the, the first sorts of things that happened were um, things like the uh, National Physical Laboratory got to BBC Micro. Uh, uh, and they were thinking, well, if this thing's going to be used for teaching, we're going to run all our standard tests for floating point accuracy on it. And presumably they fell off their collective chairs when they found out that it passed for accuracy, um, that the, all, all the correct processing was being done. And in particular, that my conversions to and from a string were precise. Now I was backed up by Arthur Norman um, for how to implement floating point system, professor at computer lab, and by a retired academic, Professor Sack, who came up with new ways to do accurate um, transcendental functions. So, as I say, presumably they fell off their collective chairs when they discovered that it was really, really well done. And they wrote quite a glowing report, and that was good. And then when the magazine started doing benchmark tests of BBC Basic versus the rest, and discovered how fast BBC Basic was. Um, and particularly when the versions on the arm came out and BBC Basic 
sort of became splendidly fast, um, then that was quite pleasing. Um, otherwise, there wasn't much time for thinking of things. There really wasn't, because we were always headlong into the next project. There were a lot of events you tend not to be able to remember past the first few backwards. You're, you're in the moment, you're building new things. What happened is history. You're, you're defined by what happens next. Well, first, what I would do, do differently, of course, we would, uh, first of all, understand that being no, number one and a dominant uh, company in Britain uh, means nothing globally. Uh, Britain is despite, uh, you know, Global Britain and all that um, rubbish that the Prime Minister produces, uh, Britain is a smallish country, a middle-sized country in a very large world. So in order to succeed, especially at the time, you really had to succeed in America. So we should have given a lot more attention to the US market because what should have been clear, you know, with hindsight, it's always uh, easy to look at these things uh, uh, with hindsight, is that this is a global market. So you've got to uh, uh, succeed on a global scale. So that was really the main uh, difference. We should have used the, uh, the money that we raised, well, we did use the money <laughs> that we raised to get into America, which just did it in a very naive way of, of setting up uh, 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 a subsidiary in the US rather than partnering with, with large uh, uh, American distributors. What what I would add uh, that we hadn't added, well, I can't really think of anything because at that time, uh, it really had all the desirable properties uh, that people wanted from a, a, from a home computer, including uh, the networking, which at that time was not so, uh, so widely uh, appreciated or indeed was a uh, was not a widely used uh, property in other uh, uh, computers so we we were world leading at the time we just didn't manage to translate it into a global market share from a UK market share The BBC wanted to do this computer literacy project to inform the general public of what was about to happen. And it succeeded in that to a very small extent. But what it did do was to create a notion of um, hackers. <laughs> um, backroom people got their first experience on BBC Micros or ZX Spectrums, and that helped build the programming and games industry that the UK still has. I think it's absolutely wonderful that there is a community of people out there who, who cherish their BBC Micro. And uh, if you've ever used a BBC Micro, uh, it is actually an incredibly uh, user-friendly uh, machine in terms of making available all the hardware features to you. Even, even from BBC Basic, you say you had these star FX commands where you, where you got direct connection to the, to the underlying hardware. Uh, and I remember, uh, being able to tell uh, Bill Gates that uh, when he came to visit us and uh, and tried to sell us MS-DOS, I could sit him down and say, Bill, I couldn't possibly take such a retrograde step. Just look at uh, what our operating system can do. So I could show him and say, look, uh, uh, you could sit down our uh, pupils in school and they can type uh, star I am Johnny and get logged on to the local area network and then use star commands to, um, to download things from the file server. And, uh, you know, Bill basically said, what's a network? <laughs> he, he had not appreciated the network uh, aspects of computing at the time because uh, we, we were really leading that, um, that part of the computing um, field. <laughs>